What's up, Internet? This is Ramblin' Josh, and you're watching another episode of Let's Play Ark the Lad 2. So, unlike the first game, we have a proper world map here. Well, I mean, a little more explorable world map. So we can look around, and there's a whole bunch of little places we can go. Uh, that's the LDS Skyport we were just at. I uh, don't think that they actually let us in any of these places. Because we want to head south across the bridge. There's another place here. And we want to not ruin town. We want to go to Indigos. I don't know why you would call a town that, but someone thought it was a good idea. We made it! That's what's said on the sign. I guess Ark is Welk. I keep calling him Ark. His name is Elk. Of course, it doesn't help that they name them so similarly. I guess this is supposed to be like a radio? So in other words, the uh, law enforcement has no idea what's going on, as usual. At least when it comes to, like, mob activity and whatnot. So I guess this is supposed to be Elk's friend. Well, she kind of got shot. Well, you may not know her name, but I mean, if you actually looked at her stat screen while you were... Not even her stat screen, but her name while she was helping you fight, then you would know her name is Lisa. Lisa, or maybe Liza. I'm going to call her Lisa. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be pronounced Lisa. So you, you're just assuming Elk was the, the hunter that was part of the stuff that happened there. Well, you're just assuming she was being pursued because of her abilities. I don't know, the guns didn't look that big. Oh, so I guess we gotta stay under the radar. Why would the police be pursuing Elk? Lotto? Okay. Uh, do I actually need to rest? I don't know if I actually even took any damage. Or no, I did take damage. My question is, why would the hunters use the lotto if they... Like, not every hunter needs to fly under the radar. Okay, so if we want, we can sleep on the couch. And we can save up on this with this little book here if we need. But for now, I just want to get the heck out of here. Can I go into any of the other rooms here? I uh, definitely can't go in that one. It's kind of boarded up. So, this is Indigo's. We can kind of look around. A little back alley here. Let's see. So here's a weapon shop. You can tell because it's got a little spear. We can check this place out. See what we got for sale. There's a light sword, an axe, dagger, spear. A whole bunch of stuff. So, let's see here. I guess this is as good a time as any to talk about equipments. So, uh, let's open up our menu here. The first thing to note is the fact that if you look in the bottom right corner here, you will see that it says our spear is level 2 out of 10 and has 3 out of 6 attack. And that might be kind of confusing, but it works exactly the way it sounds. Basically, uh, when 
you have something equipped. Uh, as you use it, uh, behind the scenes it gains, I guess it gains experience. Uh, but b basically the effect is, as you use a piece of equipment, it will start to level up. In that last battle, our, uh, against the bats and such, our spear leveled up to level 2. So it's now level 2 out of 10. You can see the Gale Bandana is already level 10 out of 10. And that's because it came at that level. But the spear, it can level up. And as its level goes up, uh, its attack will slowly go up as well. So when it gets to level 10, it will have 6 out of 6 attack. And every piece of equipment works kind of like that. Uh, the gauze wrap down here is level 1 out of 10. That has 3 out of 6 defense. And that's just the way it all works. Beyond that, you have proficiency with different types of weapons. You can see there's a little bar on the left there. And it has, uh, as the green bar progresses to the right, your proficiency will go up when it reaches all the way. And it's kind of, I'm not really sure, honestly, what exactly proficiency does, but it it makes you more proficient with that weapon, I guess. I mean, indirectly, I think it increases the defense or the damage that you do. Damaged. Weapons get damaged? I don't even remember that. So anyways, uh, we have a bunch of different weapons we can buy here. Elk has a spear right now, and spear is kind of his iconic weapon. Uh, I'm, I would consider switching him to the light sword, because in the long run I'm probably going to end up having him use swords more often anyways. The problem with spears is their damage tends to be kind of low. You can see it has 3 out of 6 attack, whereas the sword has 4 out of 9. The axe is 5 out of 10, which is higher, of course, but I just don't really like axes. They're kind of inconsistent, I feel. Swords are usually the, the, the staple, but for now at least I'm going to stick with spears just because... Uh, at this point in the game, the ability to attack from two squares away and not incur counterattacks is very handy. No, I don't want to exit the area. What is this place? Ah, the jewelry shop. Well, there's nothing I want to do in here right now. You could waste a lot of time in this game just kind of talking to random people, but I don't think I'm going to do a whole lot of that. Just because there's so many people around in this game. Although I am looking for Dr. Lotto, so... I suppose I should talk to some people. Yeah, sure. I'm a hunter. What I should be looking for is the guild, which you can see was denoted by the little monster-ish sign. Now if I come in the guild, I can look at some wanted posters. Oh, well, I can't do that right now. Okay. But as I mentioned previously, checking out the wanted posters is usually the very first thing you want to do when you get into a new town. It's very important. Uh, but I am looking for the tavern, which is denoted by the little bottle. It's usually a good place to find some information. Doc? Is that supposed to be Dr. Lotto? The Cabal. Big C. Really, that's what you named the leader of the Cabal. Big C. I'm in the mood to be picked up? What's wrong with these people? Okay, well, the tavern does not appear to be the actual place to go, so let's actually check out the guild. They did say that Lotto serviced uh, uh, hunters a lot, and by serviced I mean medically. Don't get, get your mind out of the gutter. So maybe the the guild knows where to find this person. Um. Okay. 
What about him? Oh, so he is in the tavern after all. Maybe it was that guy that the, the barkeep called Doc. No, don't! Uh. Back out. Out you go! And go in the tavern. Let's try this again, shall we? Oh, looks like this guy's, uh... Had a... Had enough. Wobbles his way out the door. Hmm. Yeah, so that really was uh, Dr. Lotto all along. Okie dokie. So, exit the area. And we want to follow him over here to Ruin Town. What are you up to? Some shady business? Who is supposed to meet you? Well, that doesn't look good. Oh, really? You were mean to me, so now I'm going to kill you. <laughs> That's uh, probably pretty good advice. Okay, so let's show them what for. That's a lot of stat-ups. One interesting thing is you can see at the bottom we've got a little bar there, and that fills up with blue as you gain experience. When it goes all the way up, then you have gained an experience level. It's a handy little indicator. Can you help me now? It does seem a little strange. Do we really want this drunk, uh, like, healing Lisa? I would, I think that would seem like a bad idea. Well, whatever. Back to Indigos we go. But... Well, let's make our way over to Shu's apartment. I believe this is it. Or, yeah, that's it, isn't it? Whatever the case, uh, we'll just have to check out how the whole Lotto Lisa thing goes next time. Well, let's play Arc the Lad 2. Catch you later!